days. So we are off and running, off and running, off and running. Okay. So today's class, today's class, I'm going to start off with a little, do I want to start off? Do I want to start off that way? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So today's class is called Don and the Sun God. It's called Don, like the rising of the sun, Don and the Sun God. And I try to make the titles as vague as possible so that it gets everybody's attention and makes them wonder, what is he talking about now? And this title came from actually some kids that I work with, a brother and a sister. And they're, this is what their name means. The girl's name in, in, um, in Hindu is Don, and his name in Hindu is the sun god. And it made me think like, wow. Like somebody named them with a purpose. Somebody named them, not just had them for a purpose, but named them for a purpose. And all of us have names. And those names, the most significant part of our name is that it's, we were named for a purpose and we were named with a purpose. And it's so funny because as much as I quote the Bible, I don't ever hardly read it. I grew up with it, but I don't ever hardly read it. But the reason, but what's so funny about it is that, and I think Leslie and I were talking about it a little bit earlier before the seven o'clock hour, is that you start to, as you, as you start to become more aware and awake, you start to say things and understand things that, and things start to make sense to you that didn't before. And so now all the things that I read when I was growing up in church or, and all the different things now are, they come back so much so clearly because now they have a a relevance that I didn't that it didn't have before. I have a different level of understanding of that's why that person said that. Oh, that's what they mean when they said that. That's what they meant when they wrote that. Oh, now it's almost like, oh, that's why my mom said no, it's too much traffic. Well, when you're a parent, you you like you said that for the first time and you remember when your mom said it to you. You're like, oh, that's what she meant. I'm finally there. I've arrived. No, it's too much traffic. We're not going over there today. We're not going right now. When you start to get on the same path or track as, as someone before you, you, you realize that as much as you swear you'd never be like them, you repeat a couple things that let you know, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I may not be like them as a person, but I have the same responsibility they had. And now I understand why they said what they said or why they did what they did. I get it. And so it reminds me, me of where it says, you know, I, 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 um, before even I formed you in the womb, I called you by name, right? Where how even before you came out to the world, you were given a name, right? You, you, you were named. You were actually made and created with a purpose. And when the kids told me their name, and we were just having a little conversation, and before we got started, and when they said, "Oh, do you know what my sister's name means? Oh, do you know what my brother's name means?" and it just kind of struck me like, wow how aware they are of what their name means and what that means to them. And all of us have names. And whatever, regardless of what the name means or whether we know what the name means or if the name has some kind of official meaning, so to speak, it's because we were named with a purpose just like we, were, we are here with a purpose. And a lot of us don't see much value in our name any more than we see in much value in ourselves or our purpose for being here. A lot of us feel like kites or just ships out to sea, just kind of floating back and forth. And we're not that. We're not that. We just like we have a name for a reason. We are here for a reason. And we are we are named with a purpose. And that name and that purpose was established before we got here. We're just waking up to what that is. We're in, we are in turn, we are we are infinitely experiencing or becoming or awakening to what that purpose is, becoming more aware of what that is, right? And I encourage you all before we get started, I encourage you all, if you, if you don't know why you're here, I, I'm still trying to figure it out, right? In a lot of ways, so I, I don't mean that, but I mean, if you don't know why you're here, ask yourself. It's like, you know what? Take some time, get quiet and say, you know what? What, what am I here for? Like, what, what am I here to do? Like, what can I, what do I do really well? What, like, like, let's have some fun while I'm here. Like, let's not, there's a great book that I have um, downstairs. It's by a, an author named Eric Butterworth. And it's called uh, Man Was Not Born to Cry. I believe it's Man Was Not Born to Cry. And it's a really, really good book. 
but and it's a uh, it's a pretty heavy reading, but it's a it's a really good book. But essentially, it's like we came here to have an experience. We're not we didn't we didn't suffering is an experience also, is especially when things are done in ignorance, right? We we but just like a sport is an experience. It's an experience whether you play well or you don't, whether you stay healthy or whether you uh, or whether you get an injury, but you're still playing. We came here to have an experience. We didn't. A, a car is just an experience. The the car is for the physical. The feeling is for, you know, the God in the body, right? That's what I call humanity now, or man, or human, right? Is basically God in flesh, mind in flesh, awareness in a flesh, right? In a physical construct. But we're here. We're all here for something. Just like we all have names. We're all here for something. And I encourage us all to just sit down and get quiet and ask yourself, ask your higher self, what am I here for? Not, not in like, tell me I'm valuable. Realize you're valuable and figure out what your value is. Like literally not like, do I have any value? But I have value. What is it? Right? I have $20. Where is it? Where's my purse? Where are my keys? Right? You're asking for you're asking for the awareness or the understanding of something you know exists. And you exist, which means you must be valuable because the, the, the creator you are made yourself to come here. And if you're valuable, then the thing you made must have value, right? So the thing you made called Johnny or the thing you made called Ronette or the thing you made called Leslie or Veronica, the thing you made called you is valuable. It has value, but in our humanity, so to speak, we have we have either forgotten that or still are not aware of that. So we don't we don't um, conduct ourselves accordingly. But we are valuable. We're not just here floating around. And when they said their names and just the look on their face when they said it and the awareness of what that meant to them, it just it struck me. And I said, "Wow, I wonder how many of us really realize not necessarily even just what our name means, but that our name." Our name means something because of what it's naming, which is you and who you are. You mean something. You are valuable. You're not just here by chance, by luck. You're not just a ship out to sea, just never reaching a dock or a port. You're not just a kite in the sky, just kind of with no owner and no one just floating around, just wherever. You actually have a meaning and a value. You're, you're not, we're not, we didn't come here to suffer. We didn't come here to, to do that. We came here to have experiences. And some of the experiences may be suffering. Some of the experiences are winning. But experiences are only designed to get you to make a choice. When you, to make a choice, whether to continue or to do something else. So when you touch a stove, that's an experience. It will influence you to make a different choice. I'll stop that, right? Um, having a great ice cream that you like, some ice cream that you like, that's an experience. And it will influence you to seek it again. Every experience is designed to influence you to stop that, do something different, keep it going. It is an it's a it's a growth opportunity. That's what you came here for, is for experiences, not the physical things that experiences represent, but the actual outcome of the experiences. That's what grows you and develops you and, uh, and it makes you have an understanding of who you are and who you want to be now and next. Right? Their, their, their humanity terms them or names them good or bad because humanity and our humanity, we see things as right or wrong, good or bad. We see time as today and tomorrow, but that's not the way your highest mind operates because it does not run out of time. It is not limited by anything. So it takes everything as an experience. It doesn't change it doesn't stop it from being what it is. So it doesn't lose, right? It only gains in knowledge and awareness and experience. And it says more of that or no more of that, right? But I want to start it off today with saying your name means something. Even if, even if you don't know what it means etymolog etymologically, even if you just think you made it up. No, you, 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 you which we will call God or the universe, whatever you want to call it, you made your name up. It does mean something. You just may not know what it means. Meaning it is a, it is a reference to who you are physically. And if it, physically you don't know who you are or why you're here or what your value is or that you're valuable at all, those are things that are important to identify for yourself so that 
you can really understand how valuable you actually are, that you are one of one, the only one there is and ever will be. And that means no one can be you. No one can give what you have, offer what you offer. No one can provide what you provide. No one can make the difference that you make. And if you don't know that, you will think something someone else is more valuable. They're just, all they're doing is expressing their value. You're not. But you are just as valuable. You are as inherently valuable as anything else, as anyone else could ever be, right? But if we don't perform that, we don't realize that we are that. So then we don't think we have that. But that's not true. We are, we are that. You are that, right? So we are all here for a reason. We are all here for a purpose. And as much as we all talk to each other, doesn't mean I know what your purpose is. I don't necessarily claim to. And I'm not trying to say I do, I'm, but I am not, but I'm not trying to say what I am saying, right? What I'm not trying to say, what I am saying is you do have value. What I am saying is your name means you are something. You are here as something. What is that? That's up to you to find out. That's, those are things that we talk about here, whether it's in the Saturday classes and the weekly classes, that you are something. You are here to be something. You are here because you are something. And the sooner you find that out, the better it's going to be for you. The sooner you find that out, the more the clicking and clacking you'll be doing. Kobe figured it out. Didn't it look like it? Michael Jordan figured it out. Didn't it look like it? Oprah figured it out. Didn't it look like it? Thomas Edison figured it out. Didn't it look like it? Like, look at what happens to the people who figure it out. It doesn't, and look, and it doesn't mean they always had it figured out. I remember an interview on Kobe Bryant where he talked about, I think he was 12 years old and he played in a, a basketball league all summer and didn't score one point. Can you imagine Kobe Bryant playing games all summer and never having one point? I don't care if you like basketball or you like him, right? One, nobody would say, nobody would believe that. Not one point. It was in an interview. And he said, the reason he kept going, he said, was because his dad pulled him to the side and said, son, as long as you're having a good time and you're doing your best, I love you no matter what happens. You don't need to score any points for me. But it was a big deal to him because his dad played professionally in Italy. His dad was a professional player in Europe. So not only did he love what he was doing, but his dad had already done it. So he had two things that he was feeling like, okay, I'm failing on two fronts, right? My dad got game and I don't, right? And I love this thing and I can't play right? But once he figured out for himself, we all know him to be what we know him to be, or what we knew him to be, right? We all know Oprah to be what we know her to be, right? Those are people who have figured out what they wanted to be, what they wanted to do for themselves, who, who they were. Doesn't mean it's the only thing you are. It just may be something for a period of time. But whenever you figure that out and you're in your thing, what does it say? Your gift, was, your gift will make room for you and set you before kings, your gift, not your labor, not your effort, not you being a good person, not you being uh, a man or a woman or black or white or a Republican or this or that. Your gift will make room for you and will set you before kings. It'll set you in the highest places, right? It'll set you in places you couldn't get through labor and hookups and everything else. Your gift will do that. Your gift comes with you. Your gift is you. That's what you have to present to the world. And I would encourage us all to take a moment today after this call or sometime this weekend and just sit down and say, huh. And it, I'm not saying you haven't, maybe you have. And if you have, great, do it again. And if you haven't, do it for sure. But sit down and just get quiet and say, huh, what, what, who am I? What do I have to offer? What is the best of me? My name is this. What does that mean? What does that mean? Who do I think I am? What do I have to offer? There's no one like me. That means I have something to give. That means I am something that no one else ever can or ever will be, right? That means I don't have any competition. I don't have any equal. I don't have anybody to strive against. I don't have, I don't, I'm, I don't, I am my own one of one. I'm the only one that'll ever be. So I don't have to, it doesn't matter if I'm doing the so-called same thing, being a basketball player, or I'm being a, a talk show host, or I'm, or I collect trash, or I'm a teacher, or I'm a speaker, or I'm a business owner. It doesn't matter if I'm doing so-called the same things. Nobody can do it the same way. That in and of itself ensures and assures my, my success, my highest and best good. Because I'm the only me, so no, so I can't be anyone else and no one can be me. So I don't have to worry about them. If I'm just me, that's good enough for me to be alive. It's good enough for me to be here today. So why isn't it good enough for everything else I would ever want? When in fact it is. But if we don't know that, then we don't actually look for that. We don't live with that expectation that not only is it 
possible, but that it's true. That you don't, we won't step out onto that thing. We don't look for it. We don't, we don't identify ourselves, right? Like, uh, like uh, again, Leslie and I were talking about earlier how humanity has its own form of amnesia. We forgot who we were before we got here. So it's almost like if you're a parent at home and then you see your kids in the grocery store and you walk right by them because you're in a different environment. That would be insane. People be looking to get you counseling or something. They'd be calling you all kind of crazy from all kind of ways. But that's who we are is still who we are. We're just in a different environment. And so we walk past our kids. And that analogy, the kids are the sun, the stars, the moon, the birds, the ocean, the air. We created all those things. Those are our creations. And all of those creations are constantly in our face to remind us that we're the parent, that we created all those things. Right. And, but just because we're in a new environment, we forgot and we walk right by them. We forgot that we're gods. But that's why the book says, don't don't you know that you are God's son, that you are all God's sons of the most high. All of us are. All of us are the beings that created all of what we call nature. The beauty of it, the power of it, the magnificence of it, the glory of it, the brightness of it, the warmth of it, the shine of it, all of it. We created that. These are this nature. Our nature is our our, our kids. They're, they're our children. They are reflections of us, of who we really are. And we're walking by it in our amnesiac state, not realizing who we are, right? So I want to start off this morning with Don and the Sun God. Your name means something. Your presence means something. You're here for a reason. You are important. You are valuable. There's none like you. You mean something. And sit down and figure out, it's not up to everyone else to tell you what that is or what you mean or what you can be or what you can mean. That's up to you. That's on you. Because only as much as they would like to, even if they were trying, they couldn't tell you the full truth. Only you can know the full truth. Only you'll be able to discover, discover that truth because only you can be in you. Only you are inside. They can't get there. No, none of us can get into each other inside. That is a reflection of our divinity, of our individuality, right? So only you can really get into that. So I encourage you to spend a little time sometime this weekend, as soon as you can, but just get quiet for a couple minutes. You don't have to be in, you don't have to, you don't have to put a robe on. You don't have to burn no candles. You don't have to face a certain way. You don't have to have an outfit on. You don't have to make it all, you don't have to make it all deep, but make it sincere, meaning like, who am I really? What do I, okay, I know I'm, I'm rich, I'm valuable, I'm important. There's none like me. So I got, so I got to be something. What is that? What is that? I got to, no one can be me and I can't be them. Well then what is it that I am that no one else can be? What do I have that no one else has? Ask yourself Then just get quiet for a second and then move on. It'll come. Hey, thank you for the answer. Thank you for telling me who I really am and, if, and I'm valuable. Okay, what is my value? What do I have here to offer so I can start having a good time here? Easy. Your gift, will, your gift will make room for you. It will set you before kings. Leslie talking earlier this morning about her sales clicking and clacking, right? And so all I see a lot of you guys are commenting now and reaching out to me and telling me your good news and your good successes, which makes me happier than any money you could have ever paid me. Right. That is that is as you become aware of who you are and you start actually looking for it and, and having an expectation and saying, no, I am somebody. So I expect to do this. So then how am I going to do that now? You'll start to see different answers come when you have expectations, when you have assumptions of your good and your success and of your value and of your importance. Right. This isn't positive thinking. This isn't something to rub your back and make you feel good about something. This is to bring awareness to the fact that you actually are something, whether you know it or not, like it or not, believe it or not, heard it or not, or whatever else it is. You are. You are. You are something. You are valuable. But only you can figure out truly what to what extent that is and really what that means. And so that's what I'm encouraging you, imploring you to, encouraging and imploring you to do this morning is to sit down with yourself and just ask yourself, okay, if I'm here and I have a name and I'm valuable and that name is just expressing my value, then what does that mean? What, then what am I really? What do I have? Sit down with that this weekend sometime and just thank yourself for the answer. Thank you for telling me. Thank you for showing me without a shadow of a doubt so that I am crystal clear. Show me what that is, how to be that thing so we can, we can have a good time in Disneyland here. We can start having a good time in this amusement park. We didn't, we're not born to suffer. We're not born to cry. We can. That's crying. Is, it, just like laughing is an experience. 
They're just their experiences, right? We're here to have all different kinds, and we do, in ignorance and in knowledge. We have all types of experiences, but we're not here to suffer any more than you take your child to Disneyland to suffer. You what, to not have a good time? Look at all the rides. That ah, psych, can't get on any of them. Let's go. Hey, let's, <laughs> let's go on to Disneyland, right? Like, we're not here to, we didn't come here to punish ourselves. We didn't come here to be like, gotcha. We didn't come here to, you know, be like, yeah, I thought you were going to have a good time, didn't you? Yeah, you're not going. Now we're going to church, right? It's like, man, you'd have a mutiny in the car. You're going to roll through Disneyland and then say, psych, and we go, man, you might, you might get hacked, right? You might get, boy, like it's jail. So just saying, I'm about to say, we're not, we're not, we're not here to suffer. We're not here to cry. We're not, that's not why we came here. Those are experiences just like others. But as we become more awake, as we wake up to who we really are, you start realizing, man, we are the same thing we were before we got here. Winners. Victory only, victory always. What does it say? You have the victory in all things. What does it say? You're more than a conqueror. What does it say? Everything you set your hand to prospers. That's who we were before we got here. That's who we still are. It's never changed. But we become amnesiac. So now we're in a grocery store and we don't realize our kids. We're no longer a parent now because we changed our outfit. Right? We're no longer a parent now because the barbecue's on. Like, no, you still are what you are. You'll always be that. Doesn't matter what your environment looks like. Even if it changes, you still are that. So I want to start off with that. I want to encourage everyone to do that today. All right. Let's go into the next thing. Okay, so imagine you're, uh, all these words come under the same title. Creator, creator. Okay, so, par so parents are a creator, right? Uh, let's just say, let's just say an inventor, even though we know the name means a little different. Inventor, parents, inventor, um, let's just say like a business owner, right? Somebody, all these things are people who started something or and I, a person who started something. Parents, inventor, business owner, um, just, just anything like that, let's just say. So all these people are under the title of creator. All of these are creators of something, right? Will we agree? All these are creators of something. Now then let me ask you a question. What if the creator, all these creators and everything that they created, what if they had to see it before they created? Mm. What would we have? I don't know what's taking so long. Nothing. We nothing. nothing. What do you mean? What's taking so long? <laughs> what's taking so long? Wait, 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 is this a trick question? You know what? You know what? Uh, what, you know, you're like, so you and your, you and your, right? You and your spouse are talking to each other. You and your significant other, you and someone are talking to each other. And we're like, and we're like, okay, let's have a baby. And then one of you says to each other, well, show me first. Show me the baby first. <laughs> no, I'm saying let's have one. Oh yeah. Okay. You're saying let's do it. Well, show me first. Uh, you know what? I'll believe it when I see it. And you're like, well, how are you going to see something if we, okay, well, you're uh, you're an inventor. You have an idea that comes to your mind. Well, I'll believe it when I see it. Monique said, I was trying to be get sophisticated with my answer. Um, Laura said they would decline the journey. You're right. Like how yeah. how do you right, like how, if you if you're the parent, right? How do you be one without a child? And how do you have a child before before you see the child? How do you see it before you have it? How do you do that? How do you, how do you have a bit, like, how do you, how do you, if you're the creator says, I have to see it before I believe it, but you're the one in charge of creating it. How does that work? It doesn't. It does not. It doesn't. Like, don't complicate it. It's not a trick. I know I'm very tricky. It's not a trick. <laughs> it's, it's, I know I'm very tricky. I know. And I, and I appreciate the respect. I like the respect. I like it. Like, Ah, no, no, not yet, because this might be a thing, right? I know it, but no, this is this is actually not a trick this time. Sometimes I tell my daughter, like, okay, okay, for real, no tricks this time, right? Because she knows I'll, I'll I'll try to you know I'll try to do it, right? But if if the creator of anything had to believe it before it saw it, what would you have? Nada. What, 
Like in, in, in any area of these lives, you couldn't be a parent if you had to see your child before you had them. You couldn't be an inventor if you had to have the invention before you invented it. You couldn't be the owner of a business if you had to have the business before you were the owner. Like you, you couldn't have the thing before you, right? So the thing is only created. It's not creative, right? It's, it's not creative. So if you are unwilling to believe in the thing that you desire to create, you will never have it because you are the creator. There's no one but you. You're waiting around for this thing to be, yet you won't create it. Hmm. You have to see it before you believe it. But if the creator doesn't believe it, then how does it get created? <laughs> if your parents don't believe in you, what do you got? Mm. It's tough. Right. If you're a five-year-old and your parents be like, you're not going to make it. Well, what is, you you're going to be like, well, what? <laughs> well, but I am doomed. I am doomed. Do, what did they say when uh, when they talked about Albert Einstein? What did he say? He said when he was when he was young, he got basically sent home from school. And his mom and his parent and his teacher gave him a note. And his mom read the note. And he said, what did it say? Oh, you're so smart. That, that we don't have, she doesn't have enough resources to teach just you. So she suggested I teach you myself. Years later, when his mom died, he found the note. He read the note and the teacher said, your son is basically stupid. You need to keep him home and teach him yourself. Oh, snap. Right? If you're, if you're, if your mom and, if your mom and dad, or, or if the, if the parent of something says you're not, it's tough. Right. Especially when you're young. It's because that's who you're looking up to. That's who created you. You're, you. You wouldn't be here without them, so to speak, right? right. You're, so his mom said, okay, well, and now, so he became what she thought he was. Not what someone else thought. So it doesn't matter what they thought. It only matters what the parent thinks, so to speak. It doesn't matter what someone else thinks of your idea or of you. It only matters what you think of your idea and you. You are the creator of the idea. It's your idea. It's not their job to support it, cheerlead it, agree with it, like it, because it's not theirs. They may not even understand it, and they don't need to. It's not theirs. You have no problem telling people to get out of your business and other things, <laughs> right? You have no problem with that. So when did the problem start coming? When did you need, do you need everybody else's advice about your checking account? You need everybody else's, did you ask, hey, what do you guys think my social security number should be? You like five, what's your favorite number? Are you taking numbers like it picks like this is the lottery, right? It's if, what would happen if the creator of something said it's impossible? What would happen? We would have nothing. I'm sorry, you have some. Oh, Johnny put in the chat, your ideas don't need approval. They don't, they only need yours. They need somebody's because they need they need they need a parent to bring it to life. That's the only person they need. That what I always tell you, it doesn't need, right? It doesn't need your help. It just needs your approval. The idea doesn't need your help. It it came to you. It didn't come from you. It came to you. It came to your human mind from you, from your higher mind. It came to you. So then when we talked about I'm on the phone again that. But when we talked about yesterday in class, we talked about an X, Y, Z statement. The Y is the middle. The Y is all the things that happen to lead you to Z. But they all happen because of X. So in the Y, the Y is all the things that happen. They're all your bridges of incident. They're all the things that happen. Those things don't have to be negative. Sometimes you may get fired. Sometimes you may get a new job. Sometimes you may get a new home. Sometimes your home may get water damage and you got to move. But you wanted a new home anyway. Right. The Y are all the things that happen as a result of the X, I, of the X, which is the idea and the Z, which is the physical outcome of the idea. And you are always operating from an X, Y, Z statement. That's not a business principle. That's a life principle that you can apply to business. But you're always operating from an X, I, an X, Y, Z statement. Why? Because X is your idea. Z is the outcome of your idea. And Y is all the stuff that happens as a result. Why is all the stuff that's happening because of your idea to lead you to the physical expression of it? Your idea as a person is what you would call your identity or your self-concept. 
So as a result of your self-concept, all this action is happening in order to lead you to a physical expression of it because your idea is invisible, right? Your outcome is visible, right? Your idea is God. Your outcome is human. It's meaning it's, this is invisible. This is visible. But the invisible always creates the visible. Always. So the Y is everything that is happening. The Y is set in motion by the X to lead you to the Z. I know we're talking now. We're going into algebra and going into all kinds of other stuff. I understand. I understand. You're welcome. See, I'm giving you guys other stuff. See, you're welcome. Right? <laughs> That's right. Just thank me and keep moving. Right? Uh, so does everybody, does it, an X, Y, Z statement is a life, it, it's a lifestyle. It's the way you live. This is not a business term. You can, they use it in business, but this is a life principle. This is always happening. You always have an idea of yourself. You always have a self-concept. That's your X. That's your idea. That is the business idea that you have. That's your idea of yourself. The Z is what you want the business to be. Physically, I have this idea and I want to be it physically. I have an idea of having a million dollar business. Now, I let you say I'm working toward that goal, let's say, of that of that being physically true. That's your your Z is the is the is the outcome. Working towards that goal is your why. It's everything that's happening as a result of the idea. You're always living on that. You're always living in a constant perpetual X, Y, Z statement. You have an idea about yourself. You have an idea about a business. You have an idea about being a parent, you have an idea about friendship, you always have an idea. You're always working off an idea or a concept. That's the invisible. This is the creative aspect. The X is the creative aspect. So if you're unwilling to entertain an idea, how do you have an outcome? Can you? If you're not willing? If you're unwilling to entertain an idea, how can you have an outcome? Can't. You can't. Like, you can't, right? Okay. If you go down the aisle of a grocery store and you're unwilling to buy those chips, <laughs> do you have the chips? No. Okay. If you have an idea about yourself that you are unwilling to entertain, like, I am healthy, I am free, I am whatever it is, if you're unwilling to entertain that idea, Will you ever have that in physical expression? No. 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 This Everybody should be like shouting immediately. This is not a trick. This is not complicated. This is serious. You know how you go down to the grocery store and somebody asks you for something and you're like, no. Did it take long? <laughs> did, did, was there, did you sit around thinking like, well, what should I say? And how should I say? No. And then guess what? And what do you say after that? And don't ask me again. <laughs> Come on, man. I mean, okay. Well, then why do I have to ask you again? If you are unwilling to entertain, if you are unwilling to entertain anything, will that thing become a reality in your world? Nope. No. So that, guess what that means? That means the converse is true. Whatever now is in your world is because you entertained it because it's in your world. The world is not the same. Your world is based on what you are entertaining or have entertained. The chips didn't, I mean, like I always tell people, I don't want to hear any complaints unless you filed a police report. I don't want to hear you blaming anybody for anything unless you can show me a police report. I want official proof that it's their fault. Otherwise, if just because something happened to you that you didn't like or somebody else was around, it doesn't mean it's their fault. You there? How'd you get there? Where were you? Who was that person? Why are you talking to them anyway? How did they hurt your feelings? Well, then why are they your friend in the first place? Why, why, why? Like, my point is like, a lot of times when you get all the way down to it, you put yourself in a position to be sniped, to be shanked, to be hurt, to be kicked, to be hit. You put yourself in a lot of positions you shouldn't have been in if you were thinking properly in the first place. So unless there's a police report, half of it, most of it, the majority of it, almost all of it is cap. Almost all of it. Hey, I, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to me too, right? I always tell you, just because I may be talking the loudest and the most, just because I'm losing the most weight up here every week, 
right? Five pounds per class in sweat. Uh, I'm talking to me too. This is this is a this is a law. This is a principle. It's not personal. The law is no respecter of persons. Taking responsibility for your own life is the way you live it well. It does not mean that you are abdicating or absolving someone else from a behavior that they did or exhibited. It doesn't mean they didn't do that. But it doesn't matter whose fault it is. It matters more whose life it is. And if you don't like what's happening, you're going to have to do what you have to do. Sitting around blaming them, sitting around worrying about the past all day, every day, sitting around healing your traumas forever, sitting around doing all this. You're wasting time. You're wasting time. It doesn't mean you, you can look back in the past. You know how long you can look back in the past? You know how long you can do that? How long? How long can you do it? Forever. So then how long, how long are you gonna take? How much time of the how much time that you have are you gonna take doing that? You're spending all your resources looking back. How fast can you walk forward looking backward? <laughs> yeah. I mean, what 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 are we doing here? Yeah. Right? It doesn't mean it's your fault like somebody didn't do something. It's learning how to take responsibility for your life and yourself and for your thinking in a way that will save you, that will move you out of that ha ever happening again. It, you're not absolving somebody. You're not saying it didn't happen. You're not saying they didn't do it. But I'm saying, how long is that going to be more important to you than what you can do about it? We are prioritizing the wrong things. We're emphasizing the wrong things. We're spending too much of our time on the things that won't get us what we want and keep us what we don't want in what we don't want, having what we don't want, being what we don't want. We we're spending too much of our time, our, 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 our time. You ever seen kids wasting time? And you're like, what are you doing? Nothing. Oh, how come you're not doing? Well, how come you're not doing your homework? Well, I don't really feel like it right now. Then it's one o'clock in the morning. You see the light on and they sleep <laughs> on the desk and they still got an hour worth of homework left but they decided they had to watch the game first because it's the playoffs, right? They had to do they had to do all these other things first. But I tell people all the time, especially athletes that I work with, I tell them all the time, how many things can you put before this thing that you say is important? How many things, especially the younger ones, college and down, the professional ones, they, they, they get, they're, they're distracted in other ways, but, but at least they understand this is about my bread. Like I got to do this at some point. But when you're in college and high school and, and, and elementary, middle, you think you got more time than you have. So you put everything in front of the thing you say is most important. So then your friends, then you got to get on the phone, then you got to get on your computer, then you got to get on your laptop, then you got to get on your cell phone, then you got to have some to drink, then you need a little nap, then you want to know, can you have a snack? You put so many things in front of your workout, you never work out. Then the game comes and you wonder why you get worked out. You wonder why you get worked on, why somebody's out there giving you the business. They're out there giving you all that smoke. And then you got the nerve to come off the court crying, be in the parking lot crying. And I just be looking at him like, <laughs> now I, I wasted my money paying to come see you play. I wasted my time coming to see you play. So when I see you next time, don't ask me for no snack, no water, nothing. We getting it from cradle to grave from the, for however long we got. But all them snacks and them detours and all them bright ideas you had on Tuesday, how that serve you on Saturday? My point is, is that we're doing too many things that don't lead us to our desired end. We're looking in the back. We're living in the back. We're living in the past. It's always somebody else. It's always, don't you remember what happened? Well, back in the day, and he did this, and she did that, and you're living there, and everybody's rubbing your back, and you got a counseling session every day, and everybody's got to hear their childhood traumas, and everybody's got a trauma, and every, everybody got a trauma. Everybody's trauma is the most important thing in the world to them. Everybody got situations. Everybody has things. It's not to minimize them, but you, do you want to maximize those or maximize your life? Do you want to maximize your problems and your history, or do you want to maximize your life and your future? It's, it's, it, is, it is not absolving people from things. It's understanding that you are the operant power, the ultimate power, and that whatever you choose to be true is going to be true. So if you feel like a victim, if you feel like you'd be victimized, that's what's going to happen. That's what's been happening. That's why it's happening. And if you don't change your mind, you can't change your life. If you don't choose a different mind, you can't choose a different experience. The mind you have is creating the mind. The idea that you're entertaining is creating the physical outcomes through all the different experiences that you're going through. All of your experiences are not personal. They're personalized, meaning they're customized to make sure that your idea becomes externalized. 
That's all they are. All of your circumstances, all of your situations, all of your day-to-day -day living is your Y based on your X to get you to your Z. If you don't like your Y, take a look at your X. It's not because of your Z. It's because of your X. Your Y is generated by your X. Your day-to-day -day activities and your what you do, what's done to you, all those things, all of your what you call activities, action is your why. But all of those are generated by your idea of it, of yourself, of whatever you're working on, whatever's happening, right? Is based on the X to get you to your Z. So if you don't like the outcome, leave the outcome alone. It had nothing to do with it. The Y is only because the X is telling it what to do. So if you don't like the X, I mean, the, if you don't like the Z, what, you're, what, what happened, and then you, or you don't like the Y, you have to look at who is happening, who is giving the orders here, what idea is being worked off of and worked on. That's your X. This is an X, Y, Z statement. This is the OG one. This is the real one. Everything else is, is, is a replica. They, they've taken the principle and applied it to business or applied it to this, but that's not a business principle. That's a life principle. So all of your day-to-day -day actions are your why, leading you to the outcomes of broke or of wealth or of sick or of health or of friends or of no friends or of no new friends or of whatever else it is, right? That is your, that is the Z is the outcome. The why is all the things it takes to get you there. And the why is generating or working off of the X. So if you have any problems, change your X, which will automatically change your Y, which will lead you to a new Z. A new X, lead, a new X will produce a new Z, which will, which will then influence and change all the Y. Because the Y is why it's happening. The Y is why this is happening. Why this is happening is because your X said that it wants you to get to Z. Does everybody understand that? Right? Does everybody, uh, does everybody understand that? Raise, blink, shout, turn a fire alarm on, say something, <laughs> right? Okay, yeah. this, this is important. I want you to understand that you're in charge of your world and you're responsible for it, but I'm telling you how to be in charge and be responsible. I'm telling you why things are happening to you, that you're not a victim of it, but you're not acting like a victor. So you're gonna be a victim. You're one or the other. There's not all these gray areas and vagueness and ambiguity that everybody leads you to believe. Uh, like my, like my, my daughter's into this new thing now. It's kind of like, well, it's kind of similar to, and it's kind of it's like, no, it's not. Well, you know, uh, right? I'm like, she's like, dad, can I have a Sprite? No, you can have a sparkling water. Well, the Sprite's kind of like sparkling water. <laughs> well, good, take the sparkling water then. You should be just as happy, right? She's into this kind of like thing. Right? It's kind of like similar sort of in a roundabout way. No, humanity does that. God doesn't do that. It's either heaven or it's hell. It's a sin or it's righteous. It's, uh, it's, it's not all the other stuff in between, so to speak, right? So these things are happening to you because your idea is causing this action to get to this outcome. So if you want a different outcome, change your idea, which will change the action, which will change all the things that are happening to you on a day to day basis. They'll, those things don't have to be negative. The why doesn't have to be negative. It's not inherently negative. It's just necessary. If you could, like I said, you could get fired or you could get promoted. It's whatever this, this why is working on the idea. And this whole mechanism, this whole ecosystem, this whole process is God driven. It's consciousness driven. Your consciousness has an idea. Consciousness is just plain. The idea is the conditioning of it. Water is just plain, then you put a lemon. Now it's lemon water. Consciousness is just consciousness, it's plain. Now you wanna be a millionaire. Now you're conscious of being a millionaire. So the idea is, okay, is millionaire. So I'm gonna provide millionaire and consciousness. I'll put those two together. So millionaire is my outcome. Now, all of my why, everything that needs to happen to get me from the idea to its physical expression is what's going to happen. That's not good or bad, that's necessary. And it's not negative. It doesn't have to be negative. Don't assume that you're going to lose something, break your leg, get fired. What's go This why is tailored to your idea coming from your self-concept. So why says, okay, who are we? What is this idea? What is the best way to get 
this idea based on who I am to this outcome. Some people take the streets to work. Some people take freeway. That's based on your idea, your self-concept. I do this or I have this ability. So therefore, and my idea is to get to work. So based on who I am and what I'm supposed to be doing and the idea that I'm going to work, I'm going to take the streets or the freeway. Which one of those are good? Which one of those are bad? They're just necessary. You got to take one of them, right? They're not good or bad. You got people on both going to the same place. They're not good or bad. They're just necessary to get you from your house to work. But the one you choose, the why that you choose, the things that are happening are based on who you are. I don't drive the freeways. Too much traffic on the freeway in the morning. I don't drive the freeway at night. Or the streets take too long. Neither Everybody's on the freeway and the street. Neither one of them are good or bad. They're just decisions that you make to get you from where you are to where you want to be. So your Y, all the things that are happening to you are because of your X to lead you to your Z. So they're not negative. They're just necessary. Like I said, it doesn't mean you're going to get fired. You may get hired. You may get this. You may move to a new house. You may meet a new, whatever it is, it's based on the idea to get you to its physical expression. All right. Does everybody understand that? Shout, wave, scream. Yes, sir. You got me to get you a sign like yes, it's golf yes. or something. Just do, do something, right? All right. Yes. This is important. All right, next thing. I'm going to read this. All right. The same humanity that invented technology and consistently improves it is the same humanity that thinks and says it can't change and believes things just are the way they are. The same humanity that invented technology all this technology that we have, electric cars and updating phones and updating cars and 4K and 10K and the internet, right? And social media, all this technology that is, in, that is increasing our awareness, right? That's consistently improves is this, the same people created that are the same people that think and say that they can't change. So you can create change. You can create things that change. You can create ever increasing changing things and you can't change. Does that sound intelligent to anyone? I mean, at all? I mean, every year they're coming out with something new, right? New car, new phone, new technology, new this, new that, right? Okay. okay. What is the difference between humanity? Humanity, mind in flesh, God in flesh, consciousness in physical form. What is the difference between one physical form that improves things and the one that believes it can't. What is the difference between you who believe you can and you who believe you can't? Well, one, one, the difference is one, one mind in flesh, one person believes, one is open and therefore able to receive. They believe something's possible. And so they're able to receive the inspiration, the ideas and the wisdom of existing truth. Their mind is open to the possibility. They believe something can be done. They have the idea and say, oh, hell yeah. The other person, which we'll get to, has the idea and say, oh, hell no. No way. They One person starts off with, I got the idea and all the different ways it can happen. The other person gets the idea and has all the ways it can. So one person says, one person's mind is open. Therefore, they're able to receive. See, if you're, if you are, if you're willing to accept the idea, you'll get all the information. If you say no, you won't get it. If you have to see the baby before you have it, you won't have it. The idea is the, it's the idea that you have to be willing to accept. But you think you have to know the outcome of how you're going to get the idea so you don't accept it. So then you don't get the information that would ever make the idea possible or realize how it could happen. Because you said, you, as, soon as, you, as soon as you heard the word or as soon as the idea came, you said no. Soon as the idea came, you started thinking about your history, about what everybody's going to say, about what you think about yourself or don't think about yourself. And then the idea gets cut off. It just, it just stops automatically. So the one person says yes to the idea. And therefore, they're able to receive, as a result of saying yes to the idea, they're able to receive the inspiration, the ideas, and the wisdom of the existing truth, of the fact that this idea is true. It couldn't have come to you if it wasn't. You couldn't have described it if it wasn't. You couldn't have said no and thought you couldn't do it if it wasn't clear. So then how could it be that clear and it not be true? 
or it not be possible. How is that? How is that? But when you said yes, now you you want it? Cool. Here's all the things it takes to make it happen. The other person says, the other person says, oh, no, I can't do that. That person says, when they get an idea, they automatically put their out of office thing on. No, I ain't here. I don't know. What? You weren't talking to me. I don't get that. No. Right? They're out of office. They've gone out of business. They claim bankruptcy. They believe it's over and too late for them. So they close themselves off to the inspiration, the information, the illumination, and the enlightenment. When you have an idea comes that comes to you, do you um do you know what an do you know what an idea actually is? No. Well, that's at least at least somebody's honest out here today. Here we go. RMS. Who thinks who who knows what that is? Um. This is what an idea is. Um, Laura said your creativity. What what is R? Um, RMS, what is this? What is this? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say the S is signal. Okay. Uh, Devane said something, mind something. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. One more. One more. Is that the reticulum? No. Okay, fine. <laughs> Re remember something about a memory, maybe? Self? Some kind of memory? Here it is. And we've all said it. So have you ever heard somebody say, oh man, this person walked into a when you when you don't give somebody credit for something because you think they walked into a some kind of situation. Yes. What kind? Real messy. <laughs> <laughs> into a ready-made. Ready-made. A ready-made situation. Your idea is a ready-made situation. Your idea is a ready-made situation. It's not something that you had to create. It's already created. It's already come to you in its fullness and completeness. That's why it doesn't need your help. It just needs your permission. It, it doesn't need your help. It already came to you complete. It was so complete that you were, it was so complete that you were clear. And it was so clear you could turn it down. You could talk about how it wasn't gonna work, how it's not gonna work, your credit ain't that good, you don't have that degree, you don't have that type of money, you don't live there, no one does that. That's not possible. I'm black, I'm a woman, I'm white, I'm this, I'm you are so clear about it. You're so clear about it that you can deny it and say it's impossible in a hundred different ways. But how could you be that clear if it's not that clear? And how is it that clear? And it came to you, if it's if it came to you that clear, that means you didn't, your humanity, your what you call yourself right now, a name, you didn't create that. It was created by your higher, your true self for your physical experience. It's a ready-made situation. If you understand it's a ready-made situation, then you understand you don't have to create it. All you have to do is accept it. And then what happens, we just talked about it. What happens after you accept the idea? What happens then? You get you get information on the path you need to take for it to for it to come true. So even when you accept it, what did you just say it again? Say it again. You get information. Stop, Stop. right there. <laughs> say that again. You get information. Say it again. You get information. Isn't that why people turn turn the idea down? Because they don't have the information. They don't have the answer. They don't know how it's going to happen. They don't know when it's going to happen. They don't know who's going to do it. But why do you need to know that when you said no? Hey, you know what? Les, uh, you know, I like to go out on a date. Can I take you out? You say no. Okay, what time should I pick you up? <laughs> Once you say no, how am I going to keep going? Where is there to go after that? Right? We, we, you'll be like, did you hear what I said? Right? So your idea keeps coming. But guess what? You keep saying no. You keep telling it, did you hear what I said? 
you just sitting going back and forth arguing. You're going back and forth arguing with your own self. You have an idea and you won't accept it. And it keeps coming for you because it wants to express. It's God wanting to have the physical experience. It is, your, it is who you really are in this body saying, I got this body to do something. I didn't come to Disneyland to sit on the bench and watch Mickey Mouse walking back and forth all day. I want to go on this roller coaster, eat this candy with these lollipops. I want to push somebody down on the ground. I want to take cuts in the line at the roller coaster. I want to do everything you do at Disney. I'm going for all of it. I'm going for the gusto. Right? That's what you're here for. What do you think you're here for? What do you, I mean, what do you, what do we think we're really here for? Do we think we're here to cry, whine, moan? What, why did we leave where we were to come here to do that? How This is not an upgrade. Is this why we, believe we, we as a collective believe in overnight success? Yes. Because we can't imagine the thing until the thing actually shows up. But the person who creates the thing believes in the thing when they got the idea. Isn't that what the word invention means? To stumble yeah. upon? Aha! It doesn't mean create. It means to stumble upon. Something already existed, but in the darkness of your mind, just like the darkness of a room, you didn't see it. You stumbled upon it. You tripped over it. It came to you, walked right into it. You didn't create it. You didn't even know it was there. You don't create ideas. You don't even know they're there. They come to you in human form. They come from you to you. They come from you as the true being you are to the human experience you're having. Anybody sit down and try to think real hard about an idea? Try to think of an idea real hard? Anybody see how that works? You want to get a headache real quick? Sit down and think of it, try to think of it, think of an idea. You'd be better off trying to drive Uber on a motor on a motorcycle. Yeah, your Uber, your Uber car is here. Where? Oh, it's me out here in the front, the motorcycle. You with the dirt bike? I'm not getting on that. What's the problem? I got a helmet. You want some goggles? You can't do nothing with that. You can't do anything with that. Your idea is coming from you to you. It doesn't need your help. It's already fully assembled. But you'll never know how it can work until you say yes. You know what? I don't know, but I don't really need to know. So yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. When you're five years old and your parents come to you and say, you want some ice cream? How long does it take? Yeah. Does it, do you ask them, well, how's your how's your savings account? I know you've been stressed out a little bit. Have you paid your taxes yet? Because I don't want to go to the, you, what do you think? This $2 ice cream cone is going to make my taxes better, right? Like, do you ask any of these questions? Do you sit around trying to figure out, well, how much gas do you have in a car? Now, you know, 89, I looked at the gas prices and they went up five cents from last week, mom. Are you sure you want to do, do you ask your parents? You'd be like, yeah, ice cream? Yes, yes. I will, it's your idea. So I feel no need to try to figure out how we're going to get there, how much money you have, how you're going to pay for it. It's your idea. And you ask me, yeah, I'm in. That idea that comes to you is, is for you to be able to get off, to do your thing. And yet you want to ask a thousand million questions. And even if you got the answer, what you going to do about it? Yeah, gas prices are high, Leslie. They five cents higher this week. Oh, yeah, mom. All right. Okay. Well, since you asked me, you have that five cent I need? No. Well, what did you ask me for then? You took me through all this and you still ain't got nothing on it. You don't have five on it in any way. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, see, that's what I do here. <laughs> yeah. Make sure everybody understand. Right? You, you don't have anything to offer, but you got to get all the information and still can't do nothing with it. You ever had somebody which you got a whole bunch of questions and they never have any answers or any or anything to offer, but they want to ask you a whole bunch of questions. Even if you give them the information, what are they going to do with it? Nothing. What do they know about it? Nothing. So what was the point? Nothing. So then I'm not going to tell you nothing. Get in. Do you want the ice cream or not? Do you want this idea or not? But don't sit around and act like you didn't get it. Don't sit around and act like somebody didn't ask you. Don't sit around and act like you didn't have no idea about being this. No, you said no. You said no. You just de you decided that it couldn't happen. How do you get to decide when something can't happen? It wasn't even your idea. You didn't even think it up and you turned it down. Didn't even think it up. Son, you want some ice cream? Yeah, dad, you ain't got no money. All right. There's no ice cream for you. But I'm going to go get some. Like, you, you, it came from you. 
right? To you, you, the you, the physical, you didn't create anything. You are created. You're not creating anything in this physical experience. Your ideas are ready-made situations. They're ready-made. They're like freeway lanes. Get in it. And it, it, you didn't paint the lines, draw the lines. You're not responsible for maintaining the lines. Get in it. It's already available for you. It's not something that you need to create. It's just something you need to choose. But once you get in it, you experience it. Once you get, doesn't everybody try to get in the fast lane when you got somewhere to go? Is anybody trying to figure out, well, if I get in the fast lane, I wonder what will happen? You know what's going to happen. That's why you get in the lane, right? The fast lane is its own ready-made situation. It has its own experience. It's, it is, it is. let's just say, genetically, it is genuinely, it is absolutely different than the slow lane. It's a different experience by nature. By creation, it's different. Each idea is its own situation. It already exists. If you get in it, you'll experience it. If you don't, you won't. But it's still sitting right there. You don't have to get in the slow lane. I mean, on the fast lane, on the freeway. You can get in the slow lane, the middle lane. You can get in whatever lane you want. It just changes your experience. In this lane, they drive like this. In this lane, they drive like that. Carpool lanes like this. Fast track lanes like that. Every lane is different. But they're ready-made experiences. That's what an idea is. It's a ready-made experience. It's not something you have to create. It's something that was that already exists. And now it's coming to you to say, do you want to have this? It's a choice. It's an experience that you get to choose whether you want that or not. You don't have to create it and you don't have to make it work. All you do is say, yes, I want that. And now all the ideas that all the why now will start kicking in. All the why, the X is the idea. The, the Z is the outcome of it. Now, when you say yes, now the Y kicks in. Now everything starts to roll. Now the engine starts rolling. And then you trust the why. Why? Because the Y is only operating according to the X, the idea. So if you accept the idea, then you can accept every circumstance or situation that comes with it. Because it's leading you to the Z. It's not leading you to P or O or A. It's not leading you off track. So you don't have to know everything that's going to happen. You, this wasn't your idea. It came from your higher mind to your physical experience mind, to your human mind. So the X is the idea. The Y are all the experiences that lead you to the Z. So if you accept the idea, then you know the idea is the, this, the, not, the invisible version of the Z that now wants to be made visible. So then the Y is the mechanism to get you there. So you can trust the Y because it's only operating off the X, leading you directly to the Z. So there's nothing to fear. There's nothing to worry about. Nothing bad can happen to you. Everything is good because everything that's being done is for your Z. And you consider that good, which is why you accepted the X. Man, I am out. I got it. I got it. Do you guys see what I'm saying? Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see it? No. I see it clearly. Clearly. Yes, I see clearly. it. Clearly. No. <laughs> Seriously. Gosh. All right. Does everyone understand what I've been saying so far? I know I've said a lot, right? So let me just slow down a little bit. Oh, Let's yes. slow down and catch up a little. All right. Does everyone understand what I've been saying so far? Right? Does anybody have any questions or anything? Because I want to keep going. I don't want to digress too far, but I want to make sure I slow the bus down, right? And make sure that we that we're understanding what's happening here. Because if you can understand that every idea is a ready-made situation. That's just not something you have to create or make work. If you can understand that every moment of every day you're living by an X, Y, Z statement, you're living by the identity that you have and what you, and therefore what you believe life is going to be like, and that is going to be physically expressed. And every circumstance that you have in life is the mechanism to get you to that physical expression of your idea. If you can understand that you are here because you mean something, you are something, and your name is just the name of that meaning meaning of your experience here. 
You mean something. You've named yourself before you got here. You mean something. And that you're not just some kind of inanimate object, some kind of ship in the ocean floating, kite up in the air, just whatever. No, that you're here and you're not here to cry. You're not here to suffer, you're, but, you, but you will cry and be suffering if you don't know why you're here or you don't know who you are because they're winning and losing are both experiences. And to God, they're no good or bad. Then neither one is good or bad because it doesn't change the fact that you're still God. This is just an experience. When you go to Disneyland, you, you, you go in as, you know, Johnny and guess what you come out as? Johnny, same thing. So all you had in the middle was an experience. Right. But the experience changes Johnny's awareness of himself because now you had something happen to you. You've had roller coasters. You've had lollipops. You've had popcorn. You've had hugs with Donald Duck. You've had the right. The experiences add to our identity. But according to those experiences, sometimes they make it feel like it's taken away from our identity if we don't know who we are or we don't know what to pick. We can get, have a great time at Disneyland or have a stomach ache. But either way it goes, you had an experience. But that's why you're at Disneyland in the first place. This is Disneyland. You can get a stomach ache or you can have the greatest time ever. You're still in the same location. And you're the same person walking into the park as you are out of the park. You're the same guy before you got in this body and you're the same guy when you leave it. Yes. All you're having in the middle is experience. That's it. That's why you came to have an experience. That's it. So you don't have to make anything work. Just choose. There's already ready-made. The idea is ready-made. Your good is ready-made. The creation is finished. You're not making anything. You don't have to make anything work. You don't have to hustle. You don't have to hustle backward or forward, slow motion or fast motion. You don't have to hustle, period. God is not a hustler. God's a creator. God has never lowered itself from creation to hustling. Hustling is not a better job title than creator. Hey, hey, what do you do? I'm a hustler. <laughs> well, what do you do? I'm a creator. Uh, I'll take that one. Mm -hmm. What do you do? I'm an employee. What do you do? I'm the owner. Uh, I'm gonna take that one. Mm -hmm. These are these are these are it's not equal. The ignorant and the knowledgeable are not equal. Right? Darkness and light are not equal. So you have to figure out which one you want to operate in. That's what we're here every day to choose, choose you this day, whom you serve. I suggest life. I suggest your greatest good. I suggest you taking the ideas that turn you on and saying, hell yeah, yeah, I want that. Yeah, I'm getting into that lane. Put your blinker on, put your hand outside the window, get your passenger to yell and be like, let me over. They hang halfway out the car like Fast and Furious. Can I get over? Can we get, do whatever you got to do, get over. The lane most of us in sucks. It ain't getting, it's, it, it sucks. It's either too slow, the car broke down. We're trying to drive the freeway looking backward in the rear view mirror, talking about we got to heal ourselves and we got to stay in this old craziness. And all you're going to do is heal yourself right into an accident. Looking in the rear view mirror, driving forward, fool. Take your eyes off the back. There ain't nothing back there that's going to help you now. Move forward, move on, move up. It's the only way you can move up is if you move forward and move on. Anybody ever run backward and jump? Anybody ever done that? Like, what are we talking about here? I just made that. That just came to me. See, that was inspiration. You see what I'm saying? You guys catch it? You catch it? Did you catch it or not? Because I'm getting ready to throw something. We got it. Stop, man. You don't even respect around here, man. Right? But, right? I want you to understand there's so much more for you. And you're not seeing it because you're looking back here. You're worried about back here. You constantly talk about here. I, I hear half of you constantly talking about that, 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 that. You want me to understand that. You want to romanticize that. You want to keep talking about that, 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 that. You wonder why you don't have anything that's up here, but you think there's nothing up here for you. How do you know? You ain't even looking that way. I don't know what's back there. There's nothing up there for me. Like, what are you talking about? No, there's not. Because you can't see it. You can't grab it. You won't go that way. Right? Move on so that you can move forward and move up like an airplane. Anybody get in an airplane? They'll be like, we're about to put this in reverse and go up to 10,000 feet. You'll be like, man, let me off immediately. What is this person? <laughs> is there drug testing happening here at all? That plane going reverse, start going fast. You'll be like, oh, 
this turns into a nightmare. We are, most of us are, all of us are going, not literally, but I'm gonna say it this way. All of us are going 99 miles an hour backward on the plane talking about prepare for liftoff. Hmm. And wondering why there's chaos, catastrophe. Everybody's on the plane, hugging themselves, calling people, we're going to die. I just want to say I love you, texting as fast as you can, because you know death is coming. You keep looking back. You keep talking backwards. You won't let the dead bury the dead. You keep looking back. And so you can never get into a new state. You can never take hold of the new idea and move forward. The new idea doesn't care about your past. If it did, it wouldn't have come. You guys watch, you guys catch that? That should be, that should be on, that should be like a, a some kind of inspirational message or something. I don't know. Rewind that clip, Cole. That's it. That's it. Right? The past doesn't care about it, about what you're talking about. Otherwise, it wouldn't be here now. It's here for you. It's an idea. It is a ready-made situation. And you like, nah, that ain't for me. For real? Now that's too good to be true. You know, if they say it's too good to be true, it is. Well, then forget it. I'm gonna leave it. And it's sitting right there like. That's like a dude, that's like you're going on a date and you be like, you know, he's just dressed too nice. He just smells too nice. His hair's calm. He got me flowers. Car looks nice. He's opened the door. This is just too good. Let me out. Wait, what? This is, we're, right? We cry and whine because nothing good happens. And when, it, and when, it, when something does happen, that's good. It's too good. Too good to be true. Oh, man. Too good. Nothing good happens to me. And when it does, it's too good to be true. So I don't get nothing or I'm going to give this one away. I mean, what? What are we doing here? I don't have enough markers to throw to make this right. This We got to just change our mind. I'm out of markers. We don't have to just change our mind here. We're going to have to make a decision to do something different. You deserve all the good in the world because that's who you are. Good couldn't come to you if you weren't good. You, you are good. You are great. There's no one or no thing better. There's no one or no thing greater. What are you waiting on? What are you waiting for? You're at Disneyland. Can you imagine taking your kids to Disneyland? They're like, you know what? The first two hours, I'm just going to be grateful. You'd be like, you know how you can be grateful? Get up and get my money's worth. Get up and get your, be grateful on this roller coaster and be grateful with Mickey Mouse because when it's time to go, it's time to go. Yeah, but when it, but now when you're getting old and it's time to go, now everybody want to try to find Mickey Mouse with your cane and your medication and your limp, right? No, find Mickey when you're healthy. Find Mickey when you first get here. Find Mickey before everybody else find the cat. Before everybody else find the dude and now you got a line, right? When you first get there, get off. You've been here for a while. What are you waiting on? You're sitting on the bench being grateful, practicing gratitude, healing your traumas, healing your past, healing. Well, then you should have did that in the parking lot. Hell, they paying you to make you go in there. So you can't even afford to go in the parking lot. Do that down the street or at home. Do it for free. Why are you paying to sit in the parking lot and review your traumas and your dramas and everything else? Right? If you're going to Disneyland, go get in the parking lot, pay quick, get out, get in quick and get on everything you can eat, everything you can eat, every ride you can get, hug everybody, slap everybody, push everybody, cut everybody, live to the end, live to the fullest. Disneyland is expensive. This life is expensive. Yeah. It's expensive. It costs. Haven't you bled? Haven't you had a headache? Haven't you got cut? Haven't you slipped and fell? It costs. You here. You might. You better start living. Mm. You. It is so dangerous. You don't make it out alive. Mm. So what are you waiting? How long are you gonna wait to live? What are you waiting on? You should be stretching in the car. You should be hydrating in the car. You should have your headband on when you get out the car. There should be no delay. Your shoes should be tied. Your belt should be on. You should literally be ready. Your fanny pack should be tight. Everything should be ready. Huh, come on, man. I don't, you want to put it on here? You want to be have some swag with it and put it on over your shoulder? Whatever you got to do. But it should be right. You should be ready to go from the jump. Stop wasting time here. Like we're not our age, but no, we're all, oh, you know, we're, I know for some of you ladies out here, you're still 23. I know that. But just to say, uh, okay, we're not going backward. Okay. So what are we waiting on to live here? These ideas, your desires are ready made situations. They're ready for you. They're waiting on you. You're not waiting on it. You, they waiting on you. They're waiting on you. Wake up, right? Get out the car, get into the Disneyland and get to crack. <laughs> all right. We on to the next. All right.
What is the difference? What is the difference between and What is the difference between feeling and feelings? Is it present and past? Okay. Okay. Feeling is a knowing. Feelings is your emotion. That's very good. That's very good. Okay. Who else? Uh Another one is feeling is like touch because you can actually feel it. And then feelings is how you actually feel emotionally. Okay. Sean put in the chat, one is emotion. Devane put feeling equals present. Feelings equals emotions. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Um, Rose Golden put one is a verb or action, the other is a noun. Okay. That's, is that's one like good. a premonition, a thought, and the other say is again. Start over. emotion. Say it again. Is one like a premonition, the first feeling, a premonition or a thought, and the other one is emotion? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, you guys said some really good things. Really, really good. And all of them are true to varying extent. They're all true. Okay. So, here's how I would define it. So, Feelings are outcomes. They're physical. Right? They're expression. Feeling is internal. It's non-physical. It's an experience. It's better said, it's an awareness. So your feelings are the physical expression of your feeling. So meaning what you feel, what you are aware of being then produces feelings about that. That's why everybody's feelings don't get hurt over the same thing. Because everyone doesn't have the same concept of themselves. They don't have the same feeling or awareness of themselves. So feeling is an awareness. Let me give you an example. So when, 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 uh, so like, like, okay, so let's say feelings. When, when, when someone says, oh, they said something or they did something that hurt my feelings, right? Your, so when your feelings are hurt, right? That's an, you express something, right? It's like you start crying or you, or you're mad or whatever else it is. That's an expression of something. So somebody hurt my feelings. You have a reaction to something. Right? But if you have a reaction, then who is the reactor? You're having, you are having a reaction. Who are you? You is an awareness. Let me tell you, here's an example of awareness. Let's say you go to uh, like a high school reunion or, uh, or you go, um, you know, you're going somewhere that you don't normally go or you're doing something you don't normally do. Like you're maybe going on a date or you're going to a high school reunion or you're going to a funeral and you haven't seen people in a long time or you're going, you're, you're doing something out of the ordinary that you don't do often and you're going to be around people that you don't see often or haven't seen in a long time. What are some of the things that come up when you, when you know you're going to see people that you haven't seen in a long time? Anxiety, anxiety. What would it be? Okay. What would it be about? Um, thinking about what this person is going to say, how they're going to look. Okay. Do you do when you're going to these places, right? Has anybody said, man, I haven't, you know, I haven't been to this place in a long time. Has anybody ever thought about how they're going to look? Like, Ooh. Like, yeah, I gained a couple extra pounds, right? Mm -hmm. Or yeah, right? That's, now, have you noticed you didn't really think about it that much that way until you were going to get around something different or someone different? Because now you become aware of who you are and you now you're acutely aware. It's a feeling, it's an awareness of being something, an awareness of being overweight 
or an awareness of being bald or an awareness of being broke or no, that's why, you know, everybody right at, at like family reunions or, or class reunions or some type of thing like that, where everybody's trying to put their best foot forward in that moment, right? People out there renting cars, buying outfits, making sure their hair is done. If you can get enough advance notice, people go on diets, don't they? I mean, am I kid? Just stop me when I'm wrong, right? But but why is that? Because those things bring up, they, they bring your awareness, they bring your feeling. Your feeling is an awareness of being. And it's an awareness of knowing, knowing who you are. You have a feeling about yourself. You are aware of being something. And a lot of times we're not aware of what that is until something new, something big, something different, something abnormal comes into our world. And then it w awakens our awareness of something. Our feeling of ourselves. Our feeling is an awareness of something. It's internal. So your feeling creates your feelings. You could not be, right, okay. In order to, in order to, so you must be aware to create. And you must create to express, right? The expression of a feeling or awareness is called feelings right? The expression of a feeling or awareness is called feelings. You have them according to who and what you think you are, to what you are aware of being. Your feelings really are an expression of your awareness of being. If you're aware of being confident, it doesn't matter what somebody says to you. Shoot, I know I look good, or I know I'm smart, or I know I'm this, or I'm that. That's a feeling you have. You have an awareness of being. It's not an emotion. It's a, it's, a, it's a stable thing. This is what you are aware of being. This is who and what you think you believe you are. Your feelings, right, are not necessarily stable, meaning they could be up one day, down the next, based on, based on what it is you're expressing. But even that is based on stability. So you're, you're, even though you're erratic, it's stable. You're constantly erratic. What, what do you call somebody constantly erratic? Moody, right? Oh, I never know what they're going to be. Oh, God, I don't know what they on now. Right? Moody. Right? Or a gossip. Or a liar. Or a there. Even though, if you look at, even though the things look like they change, or even though they're so-called bad, they're still stable. Because they're a constant expression of an awareness. Your feeling of being something, who you believe yourself to be, creates your feelings. Those are your expressions. Your feeling is not able to be seen. You don't know what somebody's thinking or feeling, believing themselves to be until they express it. You don't know they're mad until you see their body language. You don't know they're unhappy until you see their body language. So they cry or they yell or they're mad or they're sad or they're whatever else, right? That's what those are there for. They're like blinkers on a car. You don't know what somebody is intending to do until they turn it on. They are announcing their internal attention externally to the world. But who decided to make the blinker? Who decided to turn the blinker on? The driver. Who decide to express these tears? The, the, the being. And the being based on who they believe themselves to be. That is your feeling. So it's feeling Feelings are the expression of that. Yes. Is feeling a state? Yes. Okay. Feeling, you feel the way you do because of, of who you are. And who you are then picks a state, a state of mind to reside. Wealth is a state. If you don't feel you're wealthy, you will not move there. That's why you will not say, I am wealthy. You will say what? You will announce the state you live in. I am poor. I live in Texas. I live in New Jersey. It's not personal. It's not emotional. It's just what you believe to be true. It's your awareness of where you are right now. But just like you move to those states physically, New Jersey, Texas, Florida, just like you moved into them, you can move out of them. But what do we talk about? It's already a ready-made situation. The state is already ready. You can move. It's like you move from New Jersey to Florida. You can move. Just like you can move from poverty to wealth. But if you are unwilling to move into that ready-made state, you will stay as you are. You will die in your sins. You will remain missing the target. That's what sin means. It means to miss the target, to not be what you want, whether it's to be or do or have what you want. That's what a sin is. It's a Greek term. It's an archery term. It means to miss the target. So you die, you remain 
unsatisfied. You've missed the target, but you can become righteous. You can hit the target. You can now assume yourself to be. You can say, yes, I accept wealth now. That's righteousness. That is thinking of yourself as you desire to be. Thinking of yourself now. That is being willing to be the parent to produce the child, not waiting for the child to be produced and you have to see it before you believe it. The baby don't come without you. The outcome doesn't come without you. You are the creator of all of your outcomes. You are. You just use other people to do it. I think we were talking about that in the class this week. You chose your parents to get here. They are just physical things you use to express yourself. You are going to choose something to get you out. It could be a bullet. It could be cancer. It could be old age. It could be hit by a car. You are going, you are always choosing physical things to express yourself because you are what we call God. You are the universe. You are whatever you want to call that. You are the highest authority in your life. So you're always choosing your experiences and you're always choosing all the physical things that express your experiences. We are all in control of all of our outcomes because we are always choosing our outcomes according to the ideas that we accept, whether they're our own or someone else gave us that we accept, but we're accepting them either way. You buy a sweater, it's yours. Somebody buys it for you and says it's yours. Isn't it yours as well? You don't have to buy it for it to be yours. Somebody could have bought it for you and gave it to you. Someone could have suggested it and gave it to you. You, let's just say it this way so everybody kind of understands it. You, you were God before you got in this body. So who do you think picked how you got here? Who, who else picked it? Who else picked your parents? Who do you think named you? You think it was them? It wasn't them. You gave them the idea and they thought it was them. Just like you thought you had an idea. The idea didn't come from you in physical form. It came to you in physical form. You decided when you came. You decided who were the best two people to get you here. You decided that. You decided when you came. You decided what your body, you have never stopped being what you were before you got into this body. You, you're still that. That is why you're in control of all your outcomes because you've never stopped being who you really are, but you don't feel in control of your outcomes because you forgot who you are. That's why we're here because we all start to wake up and say, wait a minute, right? Something is little, something is not, wait a minute, what? We, we start to wake up. We realize there's something else happening. And now that we're starting to get like, oh, this is what it is. Yeah, now you can be consciously in control of your outcomes by constantly choosing your ex and your Z, knowing that the Y is automatic. God choose, So humanity chooses X and Z. God is the Y. Your higher mind knows everything it takes to make the idea you have a reality. So you're always in control of your outcomes because you're always in control of your ideas. The ones you create are the ones you accept, so to speak. The ones that you think are your own or the ones that you think somebody gave you. You always get to say yes or no to all of them. They're just ready-made situations. You get to choose them. That's, they're, they're like lanes on a freeway. They already exist. You don't have to make them. You just have to decide whether you want to get in them. When you get in them, you have the experience of being in that lane. When you're in the slow lane, it's an experience. When you're in the fast lane, it's an experience. They are drastically different because all, even all the things in the middle are different. It's increasing speed going to left, going from right to left, right? They're ready-made situations. All you have to do is pick them. That's all you're really doing here. In your human form, in your human form, all you're doing is picking. Creation's finished. You're not making anything. All you're doing is picking. You're picking every single thing about your experience. You've never stopped being the creator. That's why you're always picking. You picked when you came. You picked your your you picked when you came. If you picked when you came, who do you think is picking when you leave? And if you picked how you got here, who do you think is picking how you leave? When do you think the dynamic changed? The dynamic never changed. Because you've never changed. No one has ever taken the wheel and now they're in control. You've always been in control. That's why you can get sick as a baby. You've always been in control. Because a baby is a human form. Consciousness is not a baby. Consciousness is always what consciousness is. It'll always be the same. A baby is a physical term. 
a physical form is not a consciousness. That's why you can tell a grown person, stop acting like a baby. <laughs> they're over there, they're, they're actions, but they're, they're not. That's why you can read to a baby. That's why a baby can hear you in the stomach. Don't they tell you that? Don't you read to them? Don't you see people talking to them? Well, then why would you do that if they couldn't hear? Why would you do that if they couldn't understand? Why? Because they do. Because they're just like you. They're no different. You are you the whole time because you are God the whole time. You're in physical form. I'm just using the term God because we all can understand what that what we mean by that, right? Just the highest form of, of authority and power. God's name is I am. That's you. You are the highest level of authority in your life. There is no other. And just like you use your parents to get you in, you're going to use something else to get you out. Whether it's disease, old age, a bullet, cancer, it doesn't matter. You are going to choose that just like you chose them. You're going to choose when you leave just like you chose when you came. You are going to come on time and go on time. It's your time. There is no other. There is no other. No one else is making that decision for you. You can take someone else's decision and decide to apply it yourself. Yeah, even though it was their idea, it was your decision. No one else is deciding for you. You're just using someone else to give you the appearance of that. But just like, I, like we talked about in the class, no heart has ever attacked anybody. <laughs> no knife has ever got off the counter and started chasing you around the house. You use those things to cut your sandwich or to cut your finger. You used your heart to keep you going or to get you up out of here. It's just a resource, right? That same heart that attacked somebody else got you running, got this other person running a marathon. Well, which one is it? Well, it's according to your faith, be it unto you, according to the user, according to the identity of that person, so goes your heart. Attack or running a marathon. A knife, chefs love them. It's probably not good for a one-year-old. Same knife. Then It's not the knife. It's the user. It's not the heart. It's the thinker. It's not... It's not the physical world. It's how you use it according to who you think you are. That's why at the very beginning, if you don't know who you are, how do you think you're using anything? A baby's not conscious of certain things. It's consciousness isn't all the way open yet. It's ever increasing. But so why, that's why you don't give it a knife. That's why. That's why you don't let it just cross the street on its own. It's not, it's not aware of a car that way. That's why. Right? It's not a car is bad. A knife is bad. Ignorance will kill you. Lack of knowledge will kill you. Because ignorance of the law, ignorance of knowing, ignorance of knowledge, being without knowledge is no excuse for suffering. You will suffer because of it. You don't deserve to suffer. It's the outcome of ignorance. God is not teaching you anything. You are that learning everything. You are in control. God is not getting you to suffer anything. There's no God out there getting you to suffer anything. There's no value in that. What, this is Disneyland. You come here to do what? I brought you to Disneyland just to let you see what could be possible. All right, let's go. <laughs> so you paid your fare, paid your parking, paid gas to get here just to be like, this is what could be happening. Like what? It doesn't even make any sense. That's not true. That's just trad tradition. That's just custom. That's, that's all it is. It's just, it's not true. It's misinformation. It's not, that's not correct. It's not true. That's why everybody's suffering because you always suffer under a lie. A lie will always constrain you until it kills you. You don't beat a lie. You either, you either die with it or you leave it, but you don't win with it. It will keep taking and taking and taking from you until there's nothing left to take. That's it, right? Only the truth will set you free. Only the truth will keep you free. And you only have the truth when you know. And with all thy getting, with all your knowledge, get understanding. You got to know what you need to know and understand it. Understand to the point that you don't deviate from it and get any bright ideas. Think of like, oh, well, you know, okay. Well, if you want to start finessing yourself, like we talked about about a month ago, you want to start get back into finessing yourself, okay. There's an outcome for that. You can, we can finesse humanity. You can't finesse God. You can't finesse your consciousness. What you're aware of being, that's why when that, uh, when that, uh, when those family reunions come, or that's why when those high school reunions come, you become acutely aware that you're a little bit overweight. Oh, everybody else tell you that you get attitude. But when that date come out, you'd be like, shit, I got to get my stuff together. 
<laughs> You're aware. That awareness kick on quick, don't it? Come on, man, tell the truth. You know what, I'm getting on that lemonade diet. You know what, my girl, hey girl, uh, you got one of them cleanses? Girl, what you need that for? Oh, you know, I'm just trying to do something. But you got your eye on that calendar, boy, like an inmate getting out of jail. You marking off the days. I got 37 days, 27 hours, 15 minutes, 19 seconds. <laughs> You're aware. You know what it is. Come on, man. You're aware. That's that's a feeling. It's an awareness of being that is always there, whether you're conscious of it or not. That is what is dictating your feelings, your emotions, what drives you, what doesn't. That's the difference between feeling and feelings. One is internal, is an internal state of awareness. The other one is an external expression of that internal state of awareness. So when people say, oh, I just can't control myself, yeah, they have an identity. When, they, when they're saying they can't control their expression, what they're saying is that their identity is not controlled. They have an identity of being out of control. When they say, I can't control myself, they're saying, if I, they're, they're saying that if I can't control my expression, it's because I'm not in control of my experience. I have an experience that is out of control. Put a three-year-old behind the wheel of a car, they can't control themselves. How do you think they're going to control the car? They don't have the ability to control their experience, which means they can't control this. That's what it is. Right? Okay. If you, last thing, and then we'll open it up. All right. If you are, let's say you're living in your in the house of your house of your dreams. Let's say you're living in the house of your dreams and the light bulb goes out. There's a light bulb in your hallway or something goes out. What do you do? Change it. Okay, anybody else? Change the bulb. Okay. Any oh wow. Change boy, it. I mean, we gotta look at him. Look at boy, look at it. Look how you talk to me now. Look at you. Boy, it's like you get an attitude and there, got indignant. Let me change. What's the problem? I mean, what's what's so hard? Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah, but guess what? This is a court of law, and everything you say can and will be held against you. So now with your bright ideas and your big mouth and your big attitude, well, guess what? I got another question for you then, Smarty. All right? How about this? So you're in the house of your dreams, right? And you, that's right, that's right, that's right. I'm only so nice for so long. This is really Halloween, <laughs> an hour and 58 minutes of the two hours. Oh yeah, it's always tricky. I'm tricky, boy, boy, the haunted house, right? So if you're in the house of your dreams and the light bulb goes out, as, as, as someone so indignantly said, change the bulb, fool, just change it. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> if you now, if you now, if you, if you now are in the, if you're now in the state of, a state of mind you want to be in, you're, I'm now wealthy. And you have a thought that says, oh my God, how am I going to pay this bill? What do you do then? Change the thought. Okay. What, to, to what? To what? That's right. To what? <laughs> to I am wealthy. I've been wealthy. I okay. Okay. This great. Bill is paid. Oh, great. Okay. How many? Okay. Now, how many of us do that? Mm. I did that this morning, multiple times this morning, because I've been tricked enough on these calls. So I did that this morning. My right. brain, my brain felt better after I did that. There you go. How many of us are doing that? Yeah. How many of us are doing that? You moved I know into, I am. You moved into your state of mind, right? I used to be broke. I used to be poor. I used to be sick. I but now I've moved. I used to live over here, but now I got my penthouse in the sky. I'd have moved up, like we talked about, like the Jeffersons. Right? I'm out there like George getting my dance on. Right? So I'm doing my thing. And now something else comes up. Something comes up that's not the light bulb went out. You have a thought that is contrary to this new state of mind you occupy. How many of us are how many of us are just changing the bulb? Or how many of us are running out like it's heavens to Megatroid, the sky is falling, and we're like a three-year-old chasing a ball on the street? We're just running like, oh my God, it's not real. I knew it's not true. This is positive thinking. Out. Oh my God, who can I call? Oh, Jesus. Oh my God, I knew it. Oh, and I, how, did the rates go up? Oh, oh, oh God. And it's, see, I knew it. I knew we shouldn't be because New Jersey has always has the highest property taxes. Always, I knew I shouldn't have moved here. Oh my God, I knew I shouldn't have took this job. They just, oh God, they told me. 
Oh God, my sister told me I shouldn't. She went to the tarot reader. They told her that something bad was in the future. And I just knew, is this it? Oh, guess how many people do that? <laughs> how many people do that? Come on, man, tell the truth. You got an idea in your mind, yeah, right? I'm being real. Yeah, me. yeah, well, all right. You got an idea. All of a sudden now you, you're bright and you got these bright ideas and you're just indignant now. Yeah, I am who I am. You can't tell me nothing. And I'm here and I'm out here. Yeah, I wish you would say something. Yeah, I just, okay, yeah, so you into it. And now and you healthy. And now you cough three times real hard. <laughs> real hard. And you're like, oh, is it bad? Did I take my med? Where's my meds? I just... You know, because the doctor told me to take the whole thing now. So I'm not doing, I'm just saying, and just, but oh, you know what you mean when you're taking it. There's nothing wrong with taking medicine, but you know what you mean. You know, you're like, oh, shoot. I said, maybe I'm not, maybe I'm not. Uh, well, you know, well, people, every, people get sick. It's natural to get sick because nobody is healthy all the time. You know, it's flu season. It's just, right? How many times do we move into a state of mind? And then as soon as something looks different than what we've said, oh, and we've done affirming and we're out here stomping around the feet, marching around the walls of Jericho till it comes down seven times. And we, you know, doing like this boy, looking like some kind of civil rights marchers. And, oh, and everything is good. As soon as something happens, as soon as the appearance of something happens different than what you're saying, boy, the sky is falling, the walls come crumbling and tumbling down. Uh, and all this God can never put more on you than you can handle. And this is just my comeuppance because I did this and I knew it wasn't going to work. And oh, you know, my family, everybody. How many, how, how, how often do we do that? If you wouldn't change, if you wouldn't move, you would just change the bowl. Why do you move instead of just changing your mind? Why do you say, no, that's not me. That's not true. I always have more than enough. Or that's not me. I'm always healthy. I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the law. I am God. I am. Your consciousness is what heals you. Your consciousness is the power to heal you. Your consciousness is what made your physical body. There's nothing on your physical body that cannot be whatever you want it to be because your consciousness is the creator of it. So whatever you become conscious of, whatever you want to say, I am now conscious of, will your body will look like, will feel like, will act like, because your body is what consciousness has already made it. You have something? Yeah, Sean put in the chat because I have more experience with feeling bad for me than the other one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What is the, the word experience? What does that mean? What does that word in particular mean? What does that word mean? You're more familiar with? Done it before? Yeah, okay. For me, okay. What is familiarity and done it before? What does that lead to? Reps like doing it habit. times. Habit. What does habit lead to? Patterns. Patterns. What do patterns lead to? Lifestyle. What is a lifestyle? What, what creates or supports a lifestyle? Repetition. Repetition. What does repetition lead to? Your thoughts too. Your thoughts create awareness. Awareness. Yeah, I wouldn't go to get that. Yeah. This is a lifestyle. Awareness is a lifestyle. It's a style of living. You're aware of everything all the time, even if you're unaware that you're aware of it. Even if it's just, would you say, pattern, repetition, habit, those are all conditioned things until they became awareness, until they became a part of your identity, what you believe yourself to be. So when you say, I have more experience with feeling bad, what you're saying is, I have been more aware of feeling bad longer or more than I felt good. My awareness has been focused on feeling bad. That's why it repeats. Whatever God creates or created, isn't the sun still there? Isn't the moon still there? Been there for a while. It's whatever God creates, right, is maintained until or unless it's changed. Whatever God is awareness. I am. I am is first person consciousness, awareness of being. Now, oh, I am what? In your case, I am aware of being or feeling bad. Well, if you're aware of feeling bad, who's gonna who's who can change it? Who is going to change it? What other what other authority is equal to change it? Who's gonna override that? Only who's gonna you. override who's gonna override how you feel about yourself, what you believe to be true? Only you. Only you. So then guess who guess who's making you sick? 
Guess who's making you feel bad? Guess who's keeping you feel bad? Guess who started it? Like I said, it could be your own idea or the idea you accepted from someone else, but it got in there one way or the other. And that's on you, not in guilt, blame, or shame, but in responsibility, in mature awareness. Cool, I did that. I don't have to feel bad about it. I just get rid of it. Then I got to feel bad, period, or feel bad about that. It's gone. You don't have to feel bad or feel bad about it. You don't have to feel bad or feel bad about anything. Move on, move forward, move up. Change your mind. So the word experience means awareness. You have an awareness of being something. What do we say? The only reason you came here are to have experiences. The experiences increase your awareness. They become a part of your awareness. That's all you are is awareness. And so you use this physical life to create, to have experiences, which then go into your awareness, increase your awareness. There's 8 billion of us increasing our awareness as one being. So that's why you choose your experiences based on the awareness that you would like to experience. Wealth is an awareness. Poverty is an awareness. They are, they are states that you have identified long enough to become one with it for it to be expressed in your life. They're just ready-made situations that you can move in or out of. Anytime you want, just like a lane in a freeway. You're the only one in your car. Who's going to get over? Who's going to speed up? Who's going to slow down? Who's going to put the blinker on? You're the only one. You're the only authority in your life. Even if you choose to give that authority to someone else, you're the only authority in your life. Whether you choose to keep it or, or hand it over to someone else, it, you still have the authority to do both, right? That means it is yours. It's your money to spend or it's your money to give to someone else. You can do whatever you want with your money. It's your money. That lets you know it's yours because you can give it away, throw it out the sunroof. You can do whatever you want to do with it. It's yours. Now, what you should do with it is debatable, but ultimately, it's your money. Ultimately, this is your life. It's debatable what you should do with it, but ultimately, it's your life. Ultimately, this is your experience. Everyone can make suggestions, but ultimately, you have to decide because you're the only one in the car. You're the only one in that mic. If you don't put the blinker on, nobody else can make you do it. Can't you, can't you tell people hold you accountable when you don't put your blinker on and try to do something crazy? Don't people hold, hold you accountable real good, real firmly? And guess what? You got people holding you accountable you don't even know. You don't even need to know them. You don't need no accountability partner. Just do the wrong thing. And everybody is more than willing to do it. <laughs> They're more than willing to hold you accountable. You don't need to find anyone. So I'm saying all that to say you're the only one to put the blinker on. You're the only one to speed up. You're the only one to slow down. You're the only one. You're the only one to for that experience to be or not be. You're the only one to choose what your experiences are. They're all just experiences. Humanity calls things good or bad or right or wrong. God doesn't because God doesn't, it doesn't change. What happens doesn't change God. It just, uh, it, God just continues to grow in experience, but it doesn't make God think it's something else. You are who you are before you got here. Disneyland doesn't change that. It just adds to the experience of you, but it doesn't make you not this or not that, more of this or more of that as far as it doesn't change your identity. It just adds to your experience. So there's nothing to be afraid of. Make a choice to experience what you want. What do you want to be in life? That's just an experience. You can be emotional about it, but the feeling of being it is what God wants. The emotions are humanities, excitement and joy and this or that. Yeah, but those feelings come from a feeling. So you can choose to be anything you want to be. That's your power, that's your right, that's your responsibility, and that's your opportunity. That will never change, ever, ever. All right, I'll end it with that. Leave some time for questions, comments, anything like that. I'm grateful. I'm sorry. Shirley, I said I'm grateful for our sessions that we have uh, weekly as well as Saturday. I'm grateful because I see the change in my life. That's it. That's all. Yeah. That's the point. John said thank you. You're welcome. That's the point.
We're not here to be a cult. We're not here to form another organization, to have another group and another meetup. We're here to get information, to apply to our lives, to choose and change the lives we want. We can choose what we want to live, how we want to live, change it to anything we want. And and we're, and all this is proof. What does it say? The kingdom of heaven bears much good fruit. The kingdom of heaven is in you and it bears much good fruit. Should you choose to apply it? This information is here for you to choose what you want to be and be anything you want. I always say, I don't care what you want. I just want you to be. it. So I want you to choose wisely and choose amazingly because you are wise and you are amazing. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ is defined as the power and the wisdom of God, the power and the wisdom of, of, of consciousness. Your consciousness has a power, has an ability and an understanding of how to get you off in anything you want to be. It has a power and a wisdom to get you to anything you want it to be. If you're willing to say, I am this, then I am says I am powerful enough and wise enough to externalize that physically, which you call yourself, your physical world. So that's what all this information is for. It's not to have another group to meet. It's not to have another thing to just get online with. It's not to have some kind of blind allegiance to something, including me. I, I don't follow me. Follow the information. Follow me. Follow the information. Listen to what I'm saying to the information and take what you can and apply what you can take. Every day, it's a lifestyle. In every area of your life, the grocery store, driving, your kids, your relationships, your employment, your health. This is a lifestyle. This is not a coupon. This is not a get out of jail free card. This is not magic. This is not something you apply when you're in trouble or when you really need something or when you remember. This is not an this is not an obligation, meaning you're doing this anyway. You're doing you're doing an XYZ statement every day. You're living that way. We're just making you conscious of it so that you can choose which XYZ statement is actually in effect in your life. But this is not voluntary. We're not here because I'm trying to get you to do something extra or more. I'm trying to get you to do something different, to realize that you're doing this no matter what. You're breathing no matter what. You are blinking no matter what. You're thinking no matter what, but what? What thoughts are you thinking? The ones you're thinking predominantly, the ones you keep returning to is your home. That is how you're living. So this is not voluntary. This is not something that you can just like, well, I, I don't know if I don't know if I really believe all that. Okay, well, I don't you don't have to believe me. Try the information. Try it. You'll never know. You can't say you're a scientist and be like, well, that doesn't work and you haven't done a, you haven't done a, uh, the hypothesis doesn't work and you haven't done an experiment. You can't, you can't say nothing doesn't work and you haven't tried it. You can't say something doesn't work because you thought about it. <laughs> like, if you care what I, if you think I care what you think, then you're in the wrong place in the first place. I don't. I only care about what's true. I only care about what's real. And then I don't have to know what you think. I can see what you think when I look at you, when I hear you. When I see how your business is going, your health is going, your relationships are, I know what you think. I don't have to ask you, I can tell. That's not judgment or criticism. That's for, that goes for all of us, right? You shall know a tree by its fruit. That's a principle. You shall, we can argue all day what the tree is, but once the seed comes out, once the fruit comes on there, argument's over. It's out. It is what it is. So I can tell by what you look like. That's not judgment or criticism. That's just understanding of the law, right? Wonderful, Okay. I Anyone have a quick question, that? Coach. Yes. Does awareness precede outcome or does outcome cause awareness? Awareness precedes outcome. Outcome reinforces awareness. Okay. Outcome lets you know what you've been thinking. Sometimes, okay. like I said, a lot of our thoughts, because they're habitual and we've been thinking them so long, we're not aware of what we really think. We think what we really think is what we've been saying for two days or this new idea we got. But that's not really in there. It's a surface, but it's not really in there. We're always operating on what's in there, right? The, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The heart, not the mind. The heart is the subconscious. That's where all your habits lie. 95% of your actions are driven by the subconscious, like Bruce Lipton talks about. 5% is consciousness, right? So that's surface level. That's why we have a hard time changing because we're not actually changing the part of ourselves that actually is governing everything. But we believe that it's hard to change ourselves, which is a habit or a belief. And that's uh, that's the thing that we are fighting all the time is beliefs because we are the believer and there's no one more powerful than us. So awareness is consciousness. You can't, nothing can happen if you're not alive. Right. Nothing. So then everything that's happening is first because you're alive. Now you're alive doing what? Whatever you do, you get an outcome of. And the outcome just reinforces what you did. It's just a reflection of what you did, right? Of what you're thinking. I, I just want to share that. Well, first of all, thank you for yes. today. Amazing as always. I think you. Um, for, for the longest time, I, I, oh, okay, let me not go backwards. I realized that people treat me the way I treat myself. Yes. 
And so since I've been saying I am perfect, I still have my alarm set for every hour on the hour, all day long, every day. And when it when my alarm beeps, I say that affirmation or that reminder. And I've noticed that the people that I live with first and foremost have all of a sudden gotten sweeter and nicer. So I just wanted to share that. And I just wanted to say thank you for that. Man, that's wonderful. And double down on it, triple down on it, right? Uh, your, your, your outcomes are always reinforcing your awareness. And when you start choosing to what you become aware of, then to your point, you'll start to see things change. You didn't say anything to people. You didn't make any big proclamations. You didn't pay anybody. You didn't curse anybody out. You changed yourself. And there's no one to change but you. And when you change you, it changes your light. Your light shines different. You shine different. You are different. And the physical world is nothing but a reflection of you. So when you change, it has to change. You don't have to get anybody to change. The world is just a reflection. Leave the mirror alone and change yourself, right? So as you do that, that's what's going to happen to you. So now that you are proving that's true, then you double down on it. You triple down on it. You expand it, right? All the world means me well and treats me kindly. I am perfect. My life is perfect. I'm perfect and my life is perfect. I am perfect and my life is perfect. Isn't it wonderful? Everything is perfect. Isn't it wonderful? I am perfect. Isn't it wonderful? Everything I set my hand to is perfect. Uh, there is no mistake in me. There is no wrong in me. I don't miss. Everything is good for me. Everyone is working for my highest and best good and everything, right? You double down on it. You triple down on it and you'll see, and it'll just keep growing and growing. It gets your courage and your confidence. You realize you are what you thought you were. You're proving it. You're proving what is that good and acceptable will of God. You're proving that what you say about yourself and to yourself eventually, whether it's in a minute, a day, or a second, someone will say to and about you. So good for you. Keep doing it. Leslie said she's ending the call with 12 more sales that started this morning, since this morning. So I just want to say, woo -woo. I don't have a cash app, but I'm going to get one so that if you feel so inclined, <laughs> that's wonderful. Congratulations. Awesome. Awesome. Yes, question. Yes. Uh, it's, it's not a question per se. It's just a some feedback um i um i was going to church for the, like my whole life i was going to church and i don't recall any accountability to this magnitude i recall like a lot of like let's talk about our sins let's confess to one another let's feed each other room to gossip about each other's shortcomings or the marks that we miss and we'll just ask god to forgive us and i've never ever experienced accountability like this I've seen results with everybody from the beginning who started the call when I started the calls. I've seen results with all of us where we actually make the changes, where we hit the targets. Um, I've never seen you say, hey, can y'all send me money for this? I've seen you give away, give away, give away your time, your resources. I, you, I still see you do this today. I don't even remember if it's been a year or two years. I think it's been almost a year. But there's a huge difference than how I was raised and what I see in these calls. I'm eager to get it right. I see how I can get it right. I've been getting it right. My children are getting it right. We're here all curled up on the couch cuddling together. Just like this is our Saturday morning routine. This is a blessing. You are a blessing. Vero is a huge blessing. Vero is your biggest cheerleader, okay? Okay. And like, I just have to give you your flowers because you deserve them. You're not asking anybody to front you this or, you know, you're not wearing the cloak of crazy and the, the cash cloak and all of that. You're giving things away and not really sure how much to charge for your time. I remember even asking you, hey, how can we get more of this during the week? And now we get more during the week. And it's not even that much. It don't even cost nothing, really. To, to get the same game throughout the week. And those lessons help us throughout the week as well. So I just have to give you your flowers, brother. Like you, you doing the damn thing. And we appreciate you because we're not worshiping you. It's the information, just like you said. So thank you always. Thank you. You heard. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you and your family. And I'm glad you always have your children on here because, you know, what to say, train a child up in the way they should go. When they get old, they won't depart from it. Mm -hmm. Right. When, when you can do things at the beginning, boy, <laughs> It makes everything else a lot easier, a lot sooner, right? So congratulations and thank you. And I appreciate you and your family. Thank you for always coming. Thank you. All right. We have BW to go ahead. You can unmute. Okay. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Hey, this is my first time on here. How are you? Wonderful. Thank you. How are you? Thank you for coming. 
Yes, I'm well. I'm blessed. I will not complain. I am so grateful for all of the information. I was like, oh, this is good. Oh, that is good. So I'm going to go back and replay this. But my question is, um, as you could like, this is who I am. The energy I'm giving you right now is me. And I was just in this military course and I realized that my light was, um, how do I word it? Let me see. I'll say it this way. Spiritually, my Holy Spirit was disturbing the demons within other people and they were attacking me for really no reason other than being myself. So I completely shut down. But on the inside, I was like, what's going on? What can I do? So my question is, when you're in a room and the light is disturbing those around you, how can I remain the light? I, I still show myself as kind and friendly, but how can I remain my genuine, authentic self when I'm in a room and it's not received? It's a decision. It's a decision you made. They didn't agree with you to be who you want to be. You chose yeah. to be. So it doesn't matter what they say or think. You're not, mm -hmm. you're not trying to offend anyone. You're just being you. And you have a right yeah. to be you just like they have a right to be them. And they, and in their immaturity, they may not allow you the room to be you, but in your maturity, you allow them the room to be them. You made a mm -hmm. decision to be who you are. And as long as you like that enough and love that enough, then that's enough. That's all you need. And, yeah. and you, and, and if the North Star moves, how does a slave find freedom? If you stop being who you are, how do the people who decide that they actually want to be you one day, how do they find it? So mm -hmm. a lot of times you're the only light people see. But sometimes when people are asleep, that light hurts. You know, who mm -hmm. wants to be woken up at two in the morning with a cop's flashlight in your face? So a lot of times, but that's what it say. Let your light shine. Just allow yeah. it. It already shines. And, and men will see your good works and glorify your father, which is heaven. So humanity mm -hmm. sees when somebody's shining. It doesn't mean they're always ready for it, but they always mm -hmm. react because everyone reacts to light. Some people are like, yay. Some people get up. Some people roll over. Some people with the cover over their head. But you yeah. are the light and you chose to be that light. So that light is something not for their bit. They benefit from it, but it's not for them. It's because it's for you because you're choosing who you want to be. So then mm -hmm. if you're choosing who you want to be, it doesn't matter what they say or think. You're choosing who you want to be. Therefore, it doesn't matter what they say or think. And you don't change who you are because you're mm -hmm. being that way for you. But they do yeah. get the benefit. They do get the benefit of light. If it was dark all day, there'd be no flowers, be no humanity. We'd be dead in a week without light because light is life giving, right? So yeah. you you choose to be you. As long as you're choosing to be something that you value and you think is important, then it's not about anyone else. You don't make it about anyone else. So therefore they okay. cannot incentivize it or disincentivize it. You just realize that you keep doing what you're doing and everything will be as you desire it to be, not as they react and respond while they're mature. Understood. Thank you. Thank you, coach. And then I have one thing. Um, so I do have a podcast. It's called the Conscious Courage Podcast and where I bring some of my psychology studies as well as biblical uh, scripture to um, inner healing as well as transformative thinking and awareness. And would you be willing, like, you know, to be a co-host? Um, is that appropriate? Can we ask you for that? Yeah, people ask me all the time. Yeah, just reach out uh, on the people reach. Just reach out on the email. Uh, you know, Veronica Mans all that, and she'll just yes, get. Sir. Just reach out on the contact stuff and reach out to me. Yeah, reach yes, out. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yeah, and then and then she'll she'll get to me, and then yes, and we'll figure something out. Thank you. Y'all have a blessed weekend. Take care. You too. Have a good one. Appreciate. It. All right. Well, it's a little coach. Out yes, the banger oh, I know for me. Voice. The I banger for me, the yes. banger for me today was how many things do you put in front of the things that you say are important? Yes. That was the banger for me. Yes. I see, I see people do it all the time. I swear. I, I, see I talk to people about that all the time. I just yeah. talked to my coworker yesterday about that. Okay. And it was like, it was, it was just, it was crazy because so many people say like they have these goals for themselves when it comes to healthy habits and lifestyle changes but then they tell you what they can't let go of <laughs> but if you say this is important and it's what you want then you might need to shift some things and do some things a little different and open your mind and up to other opportunities so you can get to the place that you say you want to get and then I said but guess what you do you because you make your own rules because it's your life that's right but don't and it just when you said that today it was like okay maybe I could have said it away coach said it today now, how many other things, you, how many boiled eggs you going to put in front of the things that you say you really want for yourself that's causing you the issues that you're having? But right. that was the banger for today. So I appreciate you. Right. All right it's good to see you. the way you do. Yes. Uh, it's good to see you. And to your point, um, to your point, people are, 
a lot of times people have a hard time changing because what they're what they're giving up is still more valuable to them than what they're going to get, than what they think they're going to get. And no matter what we say to people, when you just say stop smoking, you have to have something to replace it with. You can't just say stop smoking. Now they don't have a cigarette. And now with, they're just walking around the circle pacing. Nicotine Agreed. just crawling all up and down their spine. They can't, like they, they don't have anything to replace it with, right? And so a lot of times people would rather have something, anything rather than no thing, right? So a lot of times people, what they're giving up is still more valuable than what they're getting. Cause they, they're just, so a lot of times we don't choose well enough to be inspired enough to give up what we have in order to get what this thing, we say what we think is good, what people want to hear, what sounds good. Oh yeah. I want to be a deaconess in the church. No, you were no, no, and you don't, you ain't read the Bible in three months. You, uh, it, right. Like it just, you know, like the things we say we want, they're not really a lot of times what we want. And that's the last thing I'll say. And it reminds me of that people's X, Y, Z statement. I didn't say that, but most people's X, Y, Z statement is cap. Even, the, even their business one. It's not true. It's not really what they think. It's not really how they feel. It's not really what they believe. It's what they're told to think and feel and believe. But they're not saying the one that where they based on what they really want or where they really are. That's why they can't ever really get to what they want. Because they one, they're not going for it. They're going for what they told they should want what they think it should sound like. So they're using words they don't use. It doesn't mean anything to them. They're thinking thoughts that that's not really the way they think. It doesn't mean anything to them. So it doesn't hold. Right. So it's important. What you say? You said it's you have to choose because you're the power in your life. You're right. You have to choose your words. Your affirmation should be what you say or how you say it. Use the words that mean something to you. Go after things that mean something to you. That's the only way it's going to work and stick. It doesn't matter the words I use. They're just a skeleton. They're just a boilerplate. And then you put in your own words. If you don't say that's cap, don't say that. If you say, uh, if you don't say I'm healthy, you'd be like, I'm super healthy. Say that. But say the things Think the things, do the things, go after the things that mean something to you. Stop going and saying and thinking what everybody else says. You won't make it. It's not you. It's not yours. It's not what you want. That's not who you are. How can you make it? And it's not you. Doesn't work. Right. So, yes, Joe, and I think like the, the one of the things that you just said that I, I've been telling people is that sometimes people are not ready to grieve the life that they have or they used to have in order mm -hmm. to embrace the life that they know they want and deserve. Mm -hmm. And it's that grieving process of not knowing how to let go, how to process and move forward with what it is that you say you want based on what it is that you say you want to have that you know you deserve. Mm -hmm. And I, it's that grieving process of their old lifestyle that keeps them from being able to embrace, love and enjoy what's to come. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's that's what it, it boils down to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed. I love it. Appreciate you, coach. Oh, man, it's good to see you. Good to see you. Wonderful. All right. Anyone else have anything they'd like to say before we get up out of here? Keep being the sun. Yeah. <laughs> keep being the sun, but also y'all join the mentality club. My kids are like, y'all, please just let's go off the call. We got to get off the call. We got to go do this. And I'm like, no, I'm going to keep talking. Um, the mentality club is like this in overdrive. So go ahead and join because it's even more lit Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Like I'm just saying, you're missing out. You are missing out. All right. Hey, everyone. Thank you. Thank you all. Love you all. Appreciate you all. Respect you all. Thank you for coming. Take this practice and go play. Take this information. Don't be deceived. You have to be a doer, not just a hearer. Don't be deceived. Apply what you can, right? And you will see it. It will do its work. The work will work if you work it. The work will work if you work it. That's another t-shirt. That's right. The work 100%. will work if you work it. All right. Hey. <laughs> hey, have a great weekend. Great rest of the day. Catch you all. Catch you all next weekend and catch some of you next week. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Have a blessed weekend. Bye. Thank you for coming.